February 2014, USD 350 Board of Education meeting in order. <coughs> Welcome all the visitors to the meeting. Welcome. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? No. Okay. Move on to approving the agenda. Mr. President, I move to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Moving second to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried, 7 0. Moving on to the consent agenda. Should have everything in your packet there. There is one more uh, hard copy of additional bills. Um, the detail's not on there, but I can pull that up here if you need to, to see any of that. Bulk of that, uh, you can see, is a our payment to the Rec Commission. That's their local tax check. Comes to us. Mr. President, I move the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Second question. Move second to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Those nay. Motion carried 7 0. Are there any patron comments tonight? Okay. Move on to the business agenda. Teacher's presentation. Uh, Mrs. Angie Webb is here to present uh, what she's doing. Uh, if you recall, she took uh, Mrs. Johnson's place, and this is the first time we've really had structured computer technology classes at the elementary level. She also does some fifth and sixth grade uh, social studies and uh, works with the kids during the MTSS time. And, uh, we wanted to show the board what, uh, what she's doing, some of the things she's doing in there. So I'll just okay. turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, just to give you an update on what's been going on, the classes have been coming to the computer lab for their scheduled um, computer lab time. The um, teachers and I have been working closely together to come up with um, lessons um, for the students to do in the computer lab that directly tie and relate to what they have been doing or have done in the classroom. Um, and so some of the projects, we have some examples of some of the things that they've done when they've come into the classroom. This was a kindergarten project where they um, were working on patterns in the classroom and so it was around um, in the month of October so they created a pattern using pumpkins and they were copying and pasting their pumpkins to create a pattern and typing in at the bottom what um, the name of their pattern, in this case it was an ABB pattern. Um, in the next example, this was a sixth grade project. We were studying Egypt in social studies, and so they had to do some research on different topics and type in text boxes and insert their own um, clip art and such. And this was a project where they created the whole thing. Sometimes I create templates and the students just um, add to it. In this case, for the sixth graders, they created the whole thing. And the next one, this was when third graders were working on multiplication and things that come in groups. And so they um, created a, a story, story, if you will, in the classroom where they were going to um, publish it in the lab. They had to come up with something that came in groups. In this case, the stop signs each having four letters and, and 24 letters in all. And showed that it was multiplication and addition in that case. This one was a um, poem that third graders wrote, um, an acrostic poem. They did the writing in the classroom and then brought it to the lab and inserted the clip art and, and typed it and put their border around the outside. And this one is also sixth grade social studies um, during our study of Egypt and they did some writing on hieroglyphics and there was a real cool website we found that let them turn um, their name into hieroglyphics. So. They got to show the hieroglyphic that represented each letter in their name. And this was a third grade project. They were working on counting money in the classroom. So in the lab, um, they inserted and copied and pasted coins, uh, different ways to show money amounts. And um, in this was a fifth grade project. They were working on arrays in the classroom. And so um, they copied and pasted the math sentences above to um, show um, to go with the matching array. And this was a fourth grade project. They created a multiplication table. They were reinforcing their multiplication facts in the classroom. 
and this was around Thanksgiving time, um, third grade project, what the, um, things they were thankful for, and so they had to do some brainstorming and then choose some clip art that would enhance their words. And this was around Christmas time. The fifth graders um, created a calendar to give as a gift, and they had to choose who they wanted to give it to and then write a poem to that person. And they um, went through the writing process with their poem and then inserted it at the top and inserted a picture of themselves. Um, not very well. That was a graph, bar graph for fourth grade. That was my fault. That was a bar graph of your favorite uh, kinds of pets. Um, this was some sixth grade writing around Christmas time. Um, we did um, some writing in the language arts classroom about giving a gift to anyone for Christmas. What gift would they give and who they'd give it to? And we went through the writing process and and um, pub ended up publishing it in the lab and then displayed it in the hallway. Uh, this was also some writing around Thanksgiving. They had to do some persuasive writing, writing from the point of view of a turkey, trying to persuade their readers not to eat turkey for Thanksgiving. So that we had some fun with that one. This was a um, second grade project. They were working on telling time in the classroom, and so they had um, that copied and pasted the clocks above to the matching time. Uh, first grade did this project. They were working on farm animals and the um, mama and baby corresponding animals. So they had to copy and paste um, the pictures from the top down in the chart below to show the cow and the calf together. This is a project by first grade two, and we're still working on this one. Um, they um, were, have this in a math book where they create these number collection boxes and the students are supposed to show, for example, 17 in a variety of ways and they can do that in word form and with tally marks and base 10 blocks. So um, they've created a plan in the classroom and then they're bringing their paper to the lab and then they're um, inserting these pictures into their number collection box. This was kindergarten. They were working on um, food groups in the, in the classroom and so, um, or the food plate. And so we had the food plate in the lab for them and then they, all the foods were on the outside of the, the plate and they had to drag and drop them into the correct food group. This was first grade. They went to the pumpkin patch in October and when they came back from the pumpkin patch in the classroom they wrote uh, about their favorite parts of the pumpkin patch and then when they came into the lab they typed in their sentences and inserted their clip art and a picture of them that was taken of them when they were at the pumpkin patch. This was second grade. At the beginning of the year they were reinforcing their addition and subtraction skills and so they copied and pasted the ladybugs from the top down into the chart below. Um, first grade worked on owls um, in one of their units of study and so we created an owl diagram, and that was probably the one of the biggest projects first grade did. It was really exciting to see how far they'd come because I had the owl there, and they drew all the lines, and they typed in all the words, I guess, where text boxes were over to the side where they drug the words over. But getting them to draw the lines and get them pointing to what they were supposed to point at, they were really proud of themselves for that. Um, this was... Kindergarten, they were working on the difference between flat shapes and solid shapes, and so they dragged and dropped their shapes in the corresponding boxes. At the beginning of the year, um, kindergarten had a, did an apple theme, and they had read the book um, Ten Apples Up on Top, and so I had taken um, all the students' pictures and inserted them in, and then they had to drag their apples um, on top of their head. And this is one first grade's working on fat families, and so we're going to um, complete this fat family nest where they'll, where they'll um, type in their fat families on each egg. This was another one around Thanksgiving. This was a second grade class. They got to insert clip art for the first time, and they were um, choosing pictures that showed things they were thankful for. <coughs> Um, this is second grade. They were working on different ways to represent numbers, so they, um, I made the template and then they typed in the standard form and the expanded form, word form, and base 10 blocks to represent their numbers. 
Um, this was kindergarten, and they really enjoyed this project because they got to use the shape tool in Word and color in their shapes and um, create the perfect shape, perfect um, square and circle. That's it. Okay. Um, in addition to projects like that, um, the third through sixth grades also working on keyboarding skills, and they're using Typing Master where they're given a username and a password, and they log in and it keeps track of their progress. Um, and so um, it's about 14 or 15 uh, lessons, and each lesson has like six different parts, and it um, lets the, the students warm up their fingers, and then they um, teaches them the new keys, and then it sequences the new keys into words, and then sentences, and then paragraphs, and at the end, um, it gives them like a lesson exam where they have to type, say, six words per minute and um, have an 80% accuracy. And so that they'll, it'll give them a two or three minute drill, and they practice that, and they get really excited when they see that for the first time. And most students are passing it within the first time, and those that don't try a second and third and increase their words per minute and, and their accuracy. Um, it's been lots of fun seeing them grow in the lab. They've a lot of a lot of good things and made a lot of progress since the beginning of the year. Any questions you have, <coughs> things that you might want to know about that I haven't mentioned? How many computers do you have and do you have enough to handle the whole class at mm -hmm. one there's, time? There's 25 in there and I think our biggest cost is 23 at this point. So we have every class that comes in there's a couple extras. We noticed a lot of the and things out here, they're all connected to what's going on in their classroom. It's not just come in the lab and we're going to learn how to cut and paste and forget about everything else we're doing, but it's all connected to what's going on in the classroom and reinforcing that. It's exciting to see the kids in there. And, uh, Mrs. Webb does a great job. Any other questions about things that go on in there, what we're doing with the kiddos in there? I bet the kids love it. They do. They do. They, um, especially that typing master, they take that stuff seriously. I mean, you can hear a pin drop during keyboarding time, and at the same time, I'm trying to get them to relax and let yeah. your shoulders down because they take that stuff They're seriously. They're pretty competitive. Um, some. some yeah, yeah, some. I really talk that up big, you know, about it's your own progress and let's celebrate you. and that sort of thing, but yeah, you can't kind of help but watch their eyes roam to the <laughs> computers around. But they they um, celebrate with each other too, you know, and they love to, yes, I made it. <laughs> so. Okay. Anything else, guys? No. One good thing about you know, getting all these kids in is with the new Common Core testing. There, there's you know supposed to be a lot more technology enhanced items and whatnot. So I think that you know the younger we can expose that the kids to that, the easier it's going to make the transition to these new assessments. So I think most of the kids are, are pretty comfortable on the things now. So I think it's only going to help in the long run. Probably the most mm -hmm. uh, the, the the biggest change there will be kids are going to have to write on mm -hmm. the assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> haven't had them typing it at that kind of an age. And, and it's tough to assess the writing if they can't type. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
uh, then they switch and go 30 minutes of music or vice versa. So um, during that time is when like the kindergarten teachers would have their plan period and so on when they're in that music and PE time. So that's one change for this year. They've always been separate in the past. They would like go to music in the morning, PE in the afternoon. Um, so it, it's been stacked back to back like that. I think um, the classroom teachers like it because they've got a full one hour block of plan time as opposed to you know, 25, 30 minutes here. You know, they, they feel like they barely get back to their classroom, it's time to go get their kids um, and ha having to do that twice a day. Whereas now they just take them, they've got that full hour block, then they can go pick them up in the gym or the music room. Um, Art, each class goes to art once a week for about half an hour. Um, kindergarten is the exception. They do not go to art. It's, it's kind of a matter of um, basically just time in the day. <clears throat> Our art teacher is just available kind of for a small two-hour window in there. So, um, But first through sixth grade does go to art once a week. Uh, they've got their lunch time there. Library, they go once a week. Um, the reason like kindergarten and first grade, the reason you see two different days is because Mrs. Christie's kindergarten class goes one day, um, Mrs. Miller goes the next, so that they're going to the library half an hour one time a week. Same with the computer. Um, kindergarten through second grade, each class goes, well in the younger grades we start them with half an hour once a week, um, then starting in second grade they go uh, 40 minutes a day. Reason third and fourth grade uh, go twice a week is because they will start with the state assessments. So again, getting them twice as much exposure, exposure um, to the computers. Uh, if you notice right below, it says MTSS. That's a new thing this year. Basically, what that is, it, it's geared towards small group and more individualized instruction, um, helping students improve their reading skills. Last month, kind of when we talked about Lexia, that's when a lot of teachers will put their kids on the Lexia program and kind of just constantly getting data that helps um, try to improve their reading skills. Uh, first through fourth grade goes from 12.30 to 1 o'clock. And then if you scroll down, you'll see our fifth and sixth grade schedule. Um, that's probably the biggest challenge is, you know, we've got three teachers trying to, to figure out how to get that to work with fifth and sixth grade so that they can get all the classes, um, you know, so that they can get the core classes, but also be exposed to things like, like band, music, computers, those type of things. So. Um, it is somewhat of a challenge, um, you know, but uh, I, think, I think it's worked out well. I kind of talked about, you know, some of the benefits. They do have the back-to-back -back plan time, or the, the full hour of plan time. It's also staggered, so um, for instance, first and second grade, they have their plan time at the same time, so if they want to kind of collaborate with one another, you know, if they want to plan a unit that they can kind of do some things together or whatever, it gives them that time. So. Um, planning for MTSS, it's nice that they have some common plan time. Um, so, you know, probably the biggest challenge is just the shared teachers and trying to find times. You know, everybody would love to do, you know, art at a certain time or computers at a certain time and so on, but, you know, we've got a two hour window in there when the band teacher is available for us. We've got a two hour window in there where the art teacher is available for us. So, just, just trying to find time. When you can squeeze all those things in, you know, we share PE and music teacher with the high school, so junior high, high school, so just um, trying to get all, all that to kind of work around their schedule is a challenge, but um, everything has seemed to work out. Um, you know, some teachers I know that, that, that feel like the morning their kids are in a lot of stuff and they don't have a lot of break in the afternoon. Um, you know, again, it, it go, kind of goes back to just the schedule and when certain teachers are available. Um, you know, and I kind of talked at the fifth and sixth grade, just just finding when you know you can get those three teachers to teach the different classes in addition to their electives and so on. So um, that's kind of what it looks like for this year. I know for next year we're going to try to add MTSS math to improve math scores. Um, you know, starting with the younger kids. So so we'll have to find a way to work that into in addition to all this other stuff that's going on. Questions on any of that? I guess I should say in the top, in first through fourth grade, like I didn't list their specific math times and so on. That's kind of up to each individual teacher as to when they want to teach those subjects. Fifth and sixth grade, we can't really do that since you know, we have more than one teacher. So, you know, those teachers get to decide when they're going to do reading, when they're going to do social studies and so on. Um, but for fifth and sixth grade, it is planned. Question about elementary going on there. 
the uh, junior high and high school schedule is on page 24, and uh, Mr. Bergen is uh, at the junior high ball game uh, performing his other job as, as basketball coach. So uh, I think I, I, I think I understand this pretty well, and uh, Mrs. Kenner might be able to answer questions as well. But uh, the uh, really a lot of our scheduling just revolves around the junior high kids. Uh, there's certain times where they have to go to PE and when they can get banned in and uh, when their core classes are, their core classes are in the morning and then uh, some of their electives are in the afternoon and then really from there we build out when can band be for the uh, elementary and where do we have a PE teacher available and some of those things. So it really revolves around, around that age of kids. Um, the uh, you know, high school kids have their certain uh, core requirements uh, for graduation. Uh, the seventh and eighth graders are pretty much set on their schedule. Uh, in the afternoon, uh, they have vocal and uh, band, and then uh, electives in seventh hour. Seventh grade has art and PE. They do a semester of each, and then eighth grade has uh, family and consumer science and uh, they do some career exploration in there and uh, PE. And then, I'm not going to go through all of this, but uh, in the packet is included the course description handbook, lists uh, the descriptions for all of the courses that we have. We don't have everything listed there of what's available in an online setting. Uh, that's not for everybody, but if there are kids that uh, can't get some things in, uh, there are those options. Uh, you have three kids in one hour, nine kids in the other hour doing some online courses. Uh, psychology, uh, pharmacology, uh, phlebotomy. Uh, and we don't uh, anticipate a lot of changes uh, in the schedules and course offerings. I'll talk about some of our career and technical education changes here. Uh, in my report, but uh, for now, any questions about what our kids are doing during the day, schedule-wise or curriculum-wise? Okay. So we don't anticipate major changes, but if there's things that the board would like to see, uh, I know one thing that was discussed last year is maybe an industrial arts offering for our junior high kids. Uh, some of those things uh, it, it would be nice to be able to offer, but with our personnel uh, and time frames, it's, uh, we have to be very creative without adding people. And, uh, so if there are things that we should uh, make a priority, uh, please let us know. What is the photo imaging? Um, is that's the dark room? Um, Mrs. Banky's class? No, it's digital. Okay. Uh, digital photography. And, uh, and that other, that GDF is Graphic Design Fundamentals. Uh, they do some of their yearbook stuff in there. Yeah. Graphic design is is your book graphic design fundamentals is teaching them stuff to get to that point. Okay. Graphic design is the last class. Okay. chance to read the architect letter of agreement. I don't have any news <coughs> to report on uh, what's been going on. The only thing would be uh, um, the, when they may have engineers in with the architect this week to look at things uh, firsthand. So they've started the design work, but uh, getting the engineering done, they'll, uh, they need to have a site visit before they can really get to that. So. 
but this would just be the formal approval of this uh, agreement with the architect so you can uh, uh, to do all the design work. And we need to approve this letter. Yep. <clears throat> Mr. President, I move the board approve the letter agreement with PBA architects as presented. There's a second. Second. I move and second to approve the letter of agreement with PBA Architects as presented. Is there any discussion? Uh, all in favor, aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7-0. Is there anything else you'd like to say about that? No, I'll probably mention that it is $63,250 plus the reimbursable expenses, which they budgeted at $13,750. So for the record. Okay, any more discussion on that topic? Not to move on to parents as teachers. Uh, this is an item uh, that uh, I believe we should look at uh, considering cutting from our budget. Uh, we share uh, this program with Stafford part of the expenses paid through a grant and uh, Stafford uh, USD 349 and, and USD 350 uh, share the cost that's not paid by the grant. Our share for this year is $10,801. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a positive program. Uh, the reason I think we should consider this as a, a budget cut item, we all know uh, you know, the last three years we've averaged losing 55,000 of our cash balance, uh, of our usable cash balance. Uh, that's a problem. We need to turn that around. We've talked about it for some time. Uh, this is one area where it doesn't have a direct relationship to what goes on in the classroom. Uh, we're dealing with uh, kids that aren't in preschool yet. And again, not that it's not a positive thing, not that they don't do some good, but uh, when I, I see that that number as uh, you know, a pair we can have in the classroom, a pair educator aide we can have working with the kids in the classroom in our school building. So uh, I don't have that down for an action item. I thought it'd be appropriate to discuss it here and give time to think on that and take action on that next month. <coughs> Did anybody have any questions for me? I forgot. What age groups did this cover? It goes birth to five, but if they're in school, uh, there's not really much work going on. So for, mo for the most part, up through age three. And you've had discussions with staff yes. on this? Yes. Mm -hmm. And how does this affect their grant or anything? <coughs> no, I didn't go into that. Um, with them knowing how just kind of I, I think it would just pick they would have to pick up the tab do we have any idea how much longer that grant is for I don't know I, I think it all depends on the state funding and how long they fund it okay. it's renewed every year okay so it's yeah, yeah. Okay. I was just curious and I have talked to uh, uh, Laura Otto, she's the one that, uh, it, it was Cheryl Foster uh, up until this year, and uh, <clears throat> so Laura is new, I, I talked uh, about it with her today, just to let her know we'd be talking about it, considering it, so. I don't think any of us want to cut in anything. Sure. But losing fifty five thousand a year is something we need to address. How many children did they service here at St. John School District? I don't know. I can get those numbers for you. This past month she had nineteen home visits between the two districts. I think if we can continue our early childhood program through the school and catching them at three years old, 
you know, starting the preschool. That hopefully that will <coughs> help hinder some of the disabilities early enough. Um, <coughs> help find them, I guess. But I know we've had very good parents as teachers, instructors in the past. So I think <clears throat> you know I've done well with the kids that they've had. Mm -hmm. So the program's not useless, it's just right. maybe You're past right. the state for us. You know, it comes down to I don't think our dollars need to be spent in the classroom, the kids that we have in our classrooms. Uh, this is one of those areas that falls outside of that. And when we set our priorities, uh, I think that's what we look at. Not that have anything to do with the effectiveness of the program. Of course, if it wasn't effective, we would have cut it a long time ago, I would think. So. Mm -hmm. What do you need a decision on this? Uh, I'll put it on the agenda for next month as an action item. Just so formalize that and it, uh, as far as the deadline it, uh, no real deadline other than this summer probably setting up the agreement but so they can work through the grant if it's going to be just Stafford they probably need to know as soon as possible so they know how to proceed okay any other questions <clears throat> this is an area I think we really need to consider uh, whether it makes financial sense. I don't know the answer to that right now. Uh, what we have is, you know, Brent is our primary lawn maintenance uh, person. <coughs> you know, during the summer, it's not a huge issue. He can take time away from uh, some of the school maintenance to go do that and take care of those things. But then in the fall and in the spring, when he's assigned regular classrooms to be cleaning, and uh, when it comes mowing time, we, he's, he can be on a mower all day for two days out of the week and uh, running the trimmer and those things. Uh, so then some other things get neglected or we have to shift personnel. So uh, I guess looking at it, either one of two things is true. Either we don't need... Uh, need him full-time in the non-mowing season or we need somebody else during the mowing season and uh, uh, so it, it is a challenge to try to get all those things done uh, so I would like to consider uh, contracting our, our lawn maintenance it would be something that we wouldn't have to worry about it's done uh, and we take care of the building and that's that so what I'm asking for is uh, if the board would be okay if I seek proposals, if uh, it makes financial sense for us to do that, uh, we can move forward with one of those proposals. Uh, if not, then we we'll reject all the proposals and we we'll move on away as we have been. What and areas are you talking about? Like the football field included in those? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, to get bids, it's feasible. Yeah. Um, I'd say get the bids. Yeah, it would, be, it would pretty much be the mowing and, and weed eating, uh, all, the, all the grass we have. So is there enough keeping busy during the summertime? Right? For Brent? Yeah. yeah. We always have plenty to do maintenance wise. That bid would also include shrub maintenance? Um, probably not. We would just handle that. In house? Yeah. How about a little landscaping? Yeah. Beautification areas. Just basically cutting grass and keeping things leaky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, once we year round or 
Yeah, as needed. Yeah, a as needed, but with stipulations, you know, once a week, and uh, you know, we don't want somebody taking advantage of that. Not that somebody would, but we don't need it. The parts that aren't watered, but once a week in August, we just got some of those things in the proposal. Sure, I'll move forward and get some proposals and bring back information to you all. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to the next year's calendar. On page 35 is a draft calendar for next year. This is pretty much exactly like this year's calendar. As far as start dates and end dates, and, uh, spring break and Christmas break and those things, um, you know, some of the professional development dates would, would float, you know, depending on what activities we have. Uh, but I went ahead and put those on here, uh, just so we have a frame of reference. What we'll do is uh, meet with uh, two teachers. From the LTA, one high school, one elementary, and then three administrators, and we'll kind of come up with a consensus on what uh, what will be best. So I just wanted to bring this up as a as a initial discussion point. If the board had any thoughts about the calendar for next year. Does the staff like to be off that long at Christmas? Uh, I think the consensus is yes. <laughs> uh, yes. yes. Okay. Even for the kids, I mean, it, those years when we we'll only have like 11 or 12 days, it, it doesn't seem, well, as a teacher, I guess I'm speaking from that perspective, you don't feel like you really get rejuvenated because you're so busy with Christmas stuff and family, you know, and you want to enjoy that, but you don't get time to rejuvenate. This year, I heard several teachers say that they felt a lot better coming back after what we have 16 days this year or something. Okay. And the kids seemed ready to come back. And On the early dismissal days, uh -huh. does that count as a full day or how does that work? We count those minutes that, are, that were there. So we, we count up all our minutes, and the minimum is 1,116. This year's calendar, which next year's will be the same, we have almost five days built in. So if we have snow days, we don't have to to cancel them or to make them up. But uh, and this calendar also has some some room, just like this year. If if we do need to add some days in May, we can without getting past Memorial Day. Or taking from spring break where people might already plan and those things. Mm -hmm. And we try to get some professional development in once a month, but having one full day every month is a lot. And uh, that's kind of what we had last year. We just had too much time. We're trying to fill, but if we need to meet with committees or do some quick things, a couple hours in an afternoon mm -hmm. with an early dismissal allows us to get those things done without you know, taking off a full day away from the kids. It is tough with scheduling when our kids are missing 7th and 8th hours a lot for our sports and everything. But, uh, I guess having the classes the rest of the day is, is better for at least those hours. How many snow days are built in? Almost five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how's he thinking? We're not going to get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel last year. Yeah. Is this calendar a printed calendar or somebody make it a... What's that? Is this calendar... Is it off of a publisher or it's something? A, yeah, it's Excel. Oh, they made a mistake in March. Oh. 
see how many people can find it. Isn't that 21 instead of 12? Well, it, was, it looked like you were supposed to have it. Right. March 20, um, yeah. Anyway, have to ride and get our money back from it. That's why we talk about these things. <laughs> <laughs> so, any thoughts, uh, other or questions? I'm good with that. Uh, I'd say if it works for them, it works yeah. for us. Okay. If you're happy with it. That's what the, well, we'll, we'll meet with the committee and uh, throw it out there and see. And we'll bring that back to the board then next month and approve that. Okay. Principal contract renewals. Uh, the contracts are included here on page uh, 36. To 39, both uh, principals <clears throat> uh, updated the form, and the contract form with KASB's recommended contract wording. Uh, nothing's really that much different. A few things like making sure that uh, you know, it does say they have to be licensed in order to keep their job, which is is the law. But we didn't have that in the other contract. It's not sometimes really worried about, but just little things like that that we that we ought to have in the contract. <clears throat> and it does specify there with the board, with their sick leave and those things, how do we handle those? We handle it just like we do with the teachers. And their personal leave and benefits. So the one thing that uh, that would be different is Mr. Bergen's insurance. We would just be paying him a salary would not be paying his insurance. So he would be paying that insurance. So that's going to show his salary a little higher. Uh, that will help out with, uh, with uh, when he decides to retire. So, uh, so it is specified there that his salary will be a little higher, but he's paying his own insurance. So, and that could be a perception issue of why, why are we giving our uh, high school principal a five thousand a six thousand dollar raise but we're not we're paying the same amount he's paying his own benefit so mm -hmm. so and the salaries will determine those after negotiations when we determine the raises for the teachers that's how we kind of determine the raises for everybody else so this would be a two-year contract uh, for next year and the following year mm -hmm. I recommend the board approve uh, both of those. Probably ought to do them in separate motions there. That's how they're listed. <clears throat> Any questions about these contracts? Look pretty first in the <clears throat> Mr. President, I move the board approve the two year contract for Mike Bergen as the Junior and senior high principal as presented. Second. And moving seconded to approve a two year contract for Mike Bergen as junior and senior high school principal. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. Mr. President, I move the board approve the two year contract for Travis Olive as an elementary school principal as presented. Second. We move and second to approve a two-year contract for Travis Olive as elementary school <coughs> principal. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Not all in favor, aye. Mm -hmm. All right. Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7-0. Mr. <laughs> Communications. Board member activities. <coughs> He's going to hold it for a minute. Plastic cup, please. <coughs> I, I do it because there's a camera facing me and this was my friend. Uh, sorry, you Carl? I didn't have any. Okay. Nothing to do. Tom? Uh, I don't really have anything. I just want to congratulate the 
boys and girls basketball teams in the recent tournaments. Did those kids good job? And the spirits Don't forget the spirits. I think there's a PDC meeting Thursday. But if it's snowing, I might not be here. So we might pass that on the job for 30 minutes of being here. But anyway, that would be what I would have to say. And the last meeting, which is okay, with some points and some dates that they had talked about. So. Okay. Thanks, Barb. I don't know if Tom had to push past the uh, bubbles. Yeah, I like that. Stan, you have any report? No, thanks. No. no. Okay. No. I don't have anything either. Um, I guess the last South Carolina Kansas board meeting with our pressure board meeting that we had two weeks ago. So, nothing here. Uh, administrative reports. Mr. Olive. Um, student of the month. Malin Sanders, uh, kindergarten, Christopher Fernandez, first grade for last month on, I believe it's January 23rd, I want to say. Our fourth graders took a field trip to Boot Hill. That was uh, the last day that was really cold. There was some discussion as to whether or not they would go, but they ended up going. Um, you've probably been hit up with kids uh, at ball games and at your doorstep and whatnot for jump rope for heart the last couple weeks. They just just concluded that. Their goal was $7,000. They raised $7,855.76. So um, they met their goal for that. On Kansas Day, would have been last Wednesday, it was a pretty busy day around here. We had our second through sixth graders. They went over to the Hall Museum um, and did some stuff within our school. But for Kansas Day, there was some. I was gone for most of the day, I'll get to in a minute, but where they made some bread and just did some different things related to Kansas. So everybody seemed to enjoy that. The teachers had positive uh, things to say about their experience as far as that goes. On that same day, Maxville hosted the Stafford County Spelling Bee. Um, I have our elementary participants listed on the report there. Uh, Julia, or excuse me, Julia Taylor in the junior high actually took second place um, from us, and then Shayla Garcia tied for fourth place. So. Did have a couple of kids from St. John Place. Um, nobody in the elementary did. Um, that's all I have for the teaching and learning. Administrative, uh, we did, you know, I, I reported last month that, we, that we'd probably lose a third grader. We did, never return back after Christmas break. Um, we are supposed to be gaining a first grader. They were supposed to start today. We didn't see them, so I think that we're, we should be gaining a first grader sometime uh, this week, so our numbers should be about the same. Uh, last, I guess it would have been two weeks ago now. Myself and Mr. Meyer went to Wichita to uh, USA Kansas annual conference. Got to hear um, one of the, the author that wrote a book that the teachers were doing a book study over, as well as the administrators. He was the the keynote speaker, and then there were some uh, different breakout sessions related to different things. I went to a couple that were related to MTSS that our elementary does. So that was beneficial. And then finally. Um, we had our Lexia training on that January 21st in-service day. Somebody from Newton was here, trained our staff on how to, how to get kids going with the Lexia, and, and they've all been using it quite a bit and seemed to, seemed to like it better than the old system. Again, that, that's part of a grant. We just had to fill out some paperwork, and we get, um, it's called the Kansas Reading Initiative Grant, uh, where that's paid for, and it's, it's the whole goal is improving students' reading skills. So um, that's up and running. And, we do have another training coming up on it in March as to kind of how to use some of the data that um, that, that program does uh, generate. So we have that coming up, I guess. And that's all I have. There were some kids asking for signatures at the ball game. They were trying to get 100 signatures. Yes. Today is the 100th day of school. So they were, I, I believe it was first grade, they're you know, kind of doing everything centered around the number 100. And I don't know what they did with those, but they were trying to get 100 signatures on their piece of paper. Okay. So, that I makes sense. They weren't signing to give money or anything. <laughs> 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 they for money. They just yeah. wanted to, just wanted to sit yeah, yeah. It has to do it today being the 100th day of school. Did that bother you, Chad? No. <laughs> it was that they weren't asking might be, for money? Might be a concern if our high school kids are doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Bergen's report is here. Uh, you see his uh, enrollment numbers there. <coughs> really hasn't changed much uh, 
whole year as far as numbers. Our high school Scholars Bowl team, they uh, went over to Ellenwood today. I haven't heard anything on that. Uh, they're probably finishing up about, about now. Bill Cordes Assembly, uh, they were in on January, he was in on January 23rd, worked with uh, grades 7 through 12, and uh, now working with the Unity Project for high school. It was supposed to be tomorrow, uh, but for some reason he doesn't want to drive from Lawrence tomorrow. Uh, so they, they, Mr. Bergen had communicated with him today, uh, canceled that pretty early, so we kind of knew we were going to have some weather, even if we did have school. Uh, Kansas Honors Program, uh, this is a KU honors the top 10% of our graduating class. They have a nice banquet uh, for the kids. Uh, we'll do that Wednesday in, in Great Bend. Uh, and you see the kids there being recognized. Uh, obviously, six is more than 10% of our class, but all those kids have a 4.0. Uh, they let us take, uh, take all of them, so that's a nice event. I'll have to work on that. K-State tie too. <laughs> uh, National Honor Society induction is uh, the 16th, as it was on the calendar, and uh, we've discussed that uh, with Mr. Bergen and uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Witt about, about that, uh, the board's input on the rescheduling that for in future years. Uh, uh, basketball tournament, uh, as you know, was scheduled for Saturday, postponed it to Today, we've got the games in tonight, uh, and then Thursday and Saturday, so we'll see how that all plays out this week. And uh, we already talked about the class schedule and calendar, and I uh, already approved the activity report. So. And then uh, my report here, uh, state assessments, we talked a little bit about this last, uh, last month, but uh, we're still in that transition period where we're going a little more with the new standards and uh, we don't know what's on the test. Uh, and, and I know I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. The, the test used to be, you know, we have, we have uh, this much curriculum and this much is tested and we've got a child left behind. That's what we focused on. It didn't matter what all, what we did, how we did on all those other things. If we did well on this, we did well on the test, and we can say our school is good even if we're failing in all these other things. So uh, we're getting to a better system where we're testing more of those things and we can see how we're doing on all of the curriculum, not just that one part. So we're still in transition. Uh, the message from KSDE is, is brief. Relax. Don't cram for the test. Don't test prep. Let's teach. Uh, and I think some of the message gets lost. One of the teachers said this. Uh, that I think relax is a bad word here because it's not we need to take it easy it's that we need to work harder and do things right teaching kids how to pick A, B, C, D which is the right answer is easier than teaching them to a, a point where they understand the concept and can talk about it and can teach others that's tough but that's real learning and that's what we're talking about that's what we're moving to so the message to the staff is still I don't care about the test results, teach the curriculum. We're going to take those results and learn what we can from them. How are we doing? Uh, but not, uh, why do we only have this much percent uh, proficient? And how does that compare to Maxville? It's, we're going to learn what we're teaching and how we're doing on those things that we're teaching. And uh, we don't even know what's going to be on the test. So. Uh, anyway, that's the message with the, with the testing. Data is important. How are our kids doing? That is important. Um, uh, career and technical education. Uh, we have uh, our pathways that we get extra funding for in our vocational classes. Vocational, we now call that career and technical education. We have pathways that we have to... Uh, set up and these courses that the kids take fit within a pathway all of these uh, we have four of these um, architecture and construction would be a cluster a career cluster each one of these bullets would be a pathway we have a construction pathway we also also have a production pathway and we have 
uh, visual arts pathway here and uh, family and consumer science we have the human services uh, family and community services pathway those are the four we have out of all of these now if we have a lot more kids and a lot more staff we can offer more pathways so for example in construction this would be the course sequence that the kids take the introduction class we don't get extra funding for that so a kid a freshman may take Intro to Industrial Technology and Drafting. Uh, first semester is one, second semester is the other. Then at the technical level, every kid we have in that class, we get the extra funding for, which uh, is, is 0.5. So uh, for that class period, we count them like half of a kid extra uh, during those minutes. So you can, I'm not going to read all of these these for you. If they, if they take... Uh, three credits in their high school career, they're, they're considered a, is a concentrator, is that what we're calling it now? Uh, used to call them completers, but they, they would have completed the pathway and they'd say they, they're a concentrator in that pathway. So to keep the pathway at some point, we need to have kids completing the program. So we could add a, uh, a public management and administration pathway, but if we only had one kid take a class every, every few years, we wouldn't get kids to go all the way through it, so we wouldn't maintain the funding, so it doesn't make sense to do that. And it's work. It's effort to go through all of these things and fill out the paperwork uh, to keep these pathways going. Uh, the teachers have an advisory committee, uh, people in business, people in the community, uh, people in the education world, that they meet twice a year and discuss the pathway and things that are going on there. So the production pathway is very similar to the woods, uh, so more focused on, on metals. So if you want to think of it like that, uh, we have the woods and the metals. Uh, and then our visual arts is kind of where our uh, computers and uh, graphic design and, and the yearbook and those things, that's where they fall. Uh, and then the media technology, one of uh, Mrs. Kinnaman's classes, they do various things, uh, do the videos, what else? We do the programs for the all programs. the sports activities, okay. um, design posters for right. all kinds of things. We use Photoshop a lot. Right. So this will be the, the work part of it where they're uh, more work-based uh, training and, and uh, real-life stuff there. Uh, family and Community Services. So this one kind of goes between Mrs. Patterson and uh, Mrs. Kim and teaches that consumer and personal finance. So, so those are our pathways that we have. Um, now, with career and technical education, we really think of every kid as having a pathway to a career. One kid may be wanting to be an engineer, but we don't really have a pathway like we do for these, but that student's going to take certain courses to get to the point where he can be an engineer going to college and, and get the get that training so really it doesn't matter what a kid is doing we're not considering them vocational they'll go they'll go down to the shop it's we're all preparing for a career in some some manner uh, so everybody has a pathway and they're kind of working on those plans of study a little bit last year and even more this year um, one pathway we're looking at adding is this one is biochemistry this is in the stem pathway uh, you may have heard some things about stem education that's science technology engineering and, ma and mathematics so biochemistry is a pathway uh, within that so we don't really need to change a lot of things we already offer the computer applications class uh, mr. Delp already offers the human biology uh, which these two courses over here, human body systems and anatomy and physiology, kind of fit within it. So we're not really, we're already teaching those things, really. Uh, and then uh, we're kind of, uh, we don't have it all planned out, but with Mr. Delp's college training, uh, he's excited about uh, doing this application class of environmental resources and wildlife. So how we add that class is tough. Uh, Mr. Delp doesn't just have time in the schedule, so it may be he offers this class one year and physics the next year. 
something like that. So, um, so what does this do for us if we go through all this effort? Well, the kids that are in human biology now, we don't get any extra funding for. Uh, but if they take these classes within the pathway, then we do get extra funding for them. So we try to fit some of these things to what we're doing and, uh, and get the extra funding. Uh, but more importantly, it's the focusing the kids on their career pathway. So any questions about all of our career and technical ed stuff? Yeah. Do you get credit for the kids that complete it, or do you just have it and they just happen to take two of the classes but don't do the third? We get credit, we get funding if they're taking a, one of those classes. Okay, they don't have to complete it and we get a bonus or no. anything? For no. That. Now there are some pathways, if a student completes that, that pathway uh, or completes certain classes, they can take an assessment that uh, they would be certified in a certain area. Like a kid can get a certification in Microsoft Office going through the computer classes. If certain ones of those, uh, is that one of them, the Microsoft Office? There's high need occupations that the school gets a thousand dollar bonus for. CNA, Certified Nurses Aid, we had three kids do that last year and we got a thousand dollars for each one of those from the state. Uh, so there's, most pathways have some sort of certification that you can get. Uh, and some of them are identified by the state as high need and, and they offer the $1,000 incentive for us to do that. But I think the message with our, what we're working toward with our career and technical education is every kid having a pathway. And I'm not taking English too because they said I have to. It's part of my plan for what I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to do. Now, we're not asking kids to pick a major when they're freshmen. It's going to change. It, my major changed when I was a sophomore in college, like a lot of kids. Uh, but at least to have some direction and be thinking about what do I want to do? Why am I here? What's the purpose? Well, that English too is going to set you up for success in, in this pathway. It's part of what you have to do to be successful. Not just, they said, I have to take it. Um, other questions about the pathway CTE information? Uh, we do have an annual conference coming up. Uh, we're going to take our CTE teachers to in, in Manhattan. We'll go up Tuesday and we'll stay there. And it's uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. If it was a little closer, we wouldn't need to stay. But uh, <coughs> we'll get as much good out of that as we can. And Mr. Delp, this will kind of be his first experience with that learning that career and technical ed stuff. Um, next item is our math curriculum uh, development. We worked on that this week. Uh, uh, last week, sorry, uh, last Wednesday. That was one of our busy days that uh, uh, somebody scheduled that day on an off of day when we had a lot of things going on. So I'll have to be careful about how we schedule that. But, uh, uh, teachers are working really hard at, uh, in those meetings. Uh, Stacy is uh, the lady with the Curriculum Leadership Institute, and, uh, really pushing this. Uh, we're learning a lot about the math curriculum, uh, taking it beyond. Here's my textbook. We'll start page one and go through it. Uh, and what we kind of discovered the other day is some of our, uh, uh, well, our current elementary text. Uh, doesn't really fit well with what, what is expected of us as far as the, the state curriculum, the state standards. Uh, there's a lot of things that we teach that aren't at the right grade level or we're missing things that we need to add things. Um, so, uh, you know, ideally we get this, our curriculum established and we choose textbooks from that. So one of the things we've discussed is updating our textbook adoption schedule. But we really need to know what we should be teaching before we pick that resource uh, to use, uh, pick that textbook. So, um, the life program or after school program, part of that grant, uh, like uh, a lot of federal grants, require a some sort of national 
workshop, national level training. Uh, so Laura Davis and Julie Fox will be going to Atlanta for this. Um, it's all paid with the grant. Uh, so, uh, so when you see a appeal for a, or approve a bill for plane tickets, you know what that's for. It's all paid through, through the grant there. Uh, or if you have the public question that, it's a, uh, it is all paid with the grant. When is that workshop? Uh, this month. I don't. It's next week. Next week? Uh, yeah. Okay. Tuesday, Wednesday it snows through there, Saturday. Yeah, Atlanta yeah. would be a scary place to be in the yeah. winter weather. We'll be there with friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, audit report. Uh, we had our audit last week. Um, we lost. Uh, 3.5 FTE overall, which is virtually nothing. Uh, we expect a little bit of that. Some of that changes uh, just with the formulas. Uh, we did lose one non-graded student because that, uh, the way that works is that the learning center, if a kid wants to graduate from St. John High School when they're done there, they're our kid. If they want a Stafford diploma, then they're their kid. So. Uh, doesn't matter where they went to school or where they live. Uh, it just depends on that. So we had one student that there was confusion on that we counted that we shouldn't have. Uh, uh, you'll notice uh, here on the technical education contact hours. There at the top. That uh, 7.4 is what we, uh, that's the FTE that we get. So take that 7.4 times 3,838. That's the extra money we get for those kids being in the vocational classes. So we get a fair amount of dollars. It doesn't fund everything that uh, we need to fund, but it does cover some of the extra costs. Um, so overall, we're up five on our head count, uh, up six and a half on our FTE, not related to uh, the special ed. Uh, oh, 19.1, sorry, total FTE, we're up. So extra revenue, what does that mean for us? That, that's, of course, a good thing. About 120000 extra revenue uh, just based on that compared to last year. Uh, so that's, that's great, but we have a lot of added expenses as well. So that's what this sheet is. Uh, there's a typo there. That should be 2013-14 FTE. I showed you this spreadsheet a while back, um, and now it's been updated. So with our enrollment uh, and the weightings, that's about 73,000 extra to the extra enrollment. And again, we're up five just head counts. So where does that the rest of that come from? Well, it's all the weightings, the vocational, and the, and the, the bus, the transportation, and those things. And then our, so our computed general fund is 2.7 million. It, what we adopted was 2.76, or 6.76 million. So we're going to need to republish. Uh, so when we get that, uh, that final letter in, we'll do that. Uh, I won't be in a hurry to do that. Recall last year we did that twice. At the end, the state came back and said we need, uh, uh, we need you to republish because extra special ed uh, funds. So. We'll hold, hold off for a while before we do that, just to make sure that doesn't happen again. Uh, in our LOB uh, base general fund budget is about 3.1 million. That's how they base our local option budget. The reason I bring this up is because this is a piece of legislation that's uh, in the works now. This is our general fund, 30% of that is less than 30% of this number. So how do they figure that? Well, our, our local option budget is 30% of this number, and that's based on the uh, base state aid per pupil from, uh, I'm going to tell you, 2008-2009, which was $4,433. Why did they do that? Well, that just allows us to collect more of our local taxpayer money uh, 
so we can fund our school. So it's very nice of them to let us collect more tax money uh, rather than just providing it to us. So that law sunsets this year. If they don't change it, that makes a huge difference in our budget. I think it will pass. I think they will change it and leave this law in place. So uh, I didn't compute that here, but we'd be taking 30% of this number uh, rather than having this number. So uh, that's a piece of legislation that's, that we'll see some action on this year. So you see all these added costs. This doesn't include uh, increasing in grocery costs, fuel costs, uh, you know, heating fuel, uh, fuel in the buses and, and the vehicles, and those little things that always increase a little bit. These are just things that I know, big ticket items, these were increasing. Uh, so just over $100,000. All of these things in added revenue, this is one thing we discovered with the audit. Uh, we had an error in how we were accounting for some special ed transportation, uh, so we'll lose a little bit this year uh, based on that and how we reported that to the state. So really, when you figure all these things in, the extra revenue compared to what we know we have to spend this year, it's not that big of a difference, about 30000 Go back to what we've been spending down our cash balance by about $55,000. Um, it's kind of all gone. So uh, it looks like a lot of extra money, uh, but in the end, it's, it's, it's of course better than it would have been without the extra revenue. Uh, so, uh, that being said, we're in a lot better spot than, than uh, this time one year ago than I thought we would be. So, I guess the message there is we still need to be cutting expenses. Uh, seeing all that extra revenue doesn't make me reconsider what my recommendation would be for parents as teachers or some of those things we need to do to cut expenses. Any questions about about this? I didn't really have anything on the capital improvements update. Uh, I kind of covered that with the architect letter. Uh, still working on our heating and air. One thing that complicates that situation is there's asbestos, of course, in the uh, duct work. And, uh, you know, things are just going to, that's going to need to be done first. And once we dig into that, we have no heat and air because uh, that's in the air handling units. And once we take that out, uh, we have no heat and air, no way to move the, the air around. So uh, it needs to be done when we're done freezing. And we'll probably need to be shut down for a little while, which we can't really do that when school's going on. So. Really, all this is going to have to happen in the summer, and we'll be shut down for a bit. And, uh, you know, initially, thinking that maybe we can replace those things in the, in the spring and have them ready to go in the summer, but that's not going to be the case. So it's, uh, logistics will be very tricky on that. Um, I wish I could end with something more positive, but uh, uh, oh, I will end up. In with something positive. I do have one other thing after this. Our state general fund uh, profile here. This uh, there's a lot of numbers here, but look at the ending balance. Uh, here, 188 million uh, in fiscal year 2011. That was 10-11 school year. Uh, went up to 502 uh, last year. It was at 709. Estimated uh, to end this year would be down to 530. Estimated the end of next year down to 247, 248. And then the following year down to 12.3. Uh, we're getting through the budget at the state level by spending down our cash balance. That sounds kind of familiar. That needs to turn around. Um, we've been cutting and cutting and cutting, and now with the tax law changes, that complicates things a lot. Uh, so with the lawsuit, uh, 
ruling coming down sometime. We don't know when. It was expected to be last month. No one knows if it's going to be uh, even during this legislative session or not. But even if they would rule that the legislature is not funding uh, schools at the constitutional level, there's no money there. And even if we continue on the path that we are at this funding level, the state runs out of money, and I'm not I'm not sure that uh, some of our legislators grasp that idea that the money's going to go away. We we can't keep doing what we're doing. Um, uh, I'm not going to go into the lawsuit a lot because it just uh, we'll know when we know. Uh, Another thing, uh, a positive thing, is uh, all-day kindergarten funding. Currently, they're funded at uh, 0 0.5, so every kid in kindergarten would count as a half a kid, even though they're here all day. So the governor has proposed funding that fully, so all the kids would count as, as 1.0. Uh, that would mean about 40,000 to us in year five. They'll gradually increase it. Uh, so what would we do with that money? Uh, well, we've got budget holes to fill already. Uh, added uh, paraeducators uh, for at-risk kids, that's dollars we can put there. Uh, technology, uh, career and technical education, uh, you know, adding some pathways. There's a lot, well, a lot of things we can do with that, that money if it was, if it was funded. So there, uh, the legislature is studying that now. Uh, ice cream machine, as you know, uh, I, I hadn't brought it up in a meeting, so I've done to bring it up here. Uh, the lodge donated the ice cream machine uh, to the school district. Uh, it's been used quite a bit already. Uh, it's been a big hit. Uh, and there were some concerns about, uh, about it getting on the bleachers or on the gym floor. We have, uh, I don't think we've had one incident in the bleachers. Uh, some, some of those things get through. We don't have people posted at the doors. And sometimes uh, good people <laughs> Ignore the superintendent, walk right by. <laughs> I'll tell you that story later. <laughs> but uh, I sent the lodge a thank you letter, and we're going to take the machine out Thursday and serve them ice cream and with some toppings of some sort. <laughs> so I, I thought that was appropriate. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. So it is very nice. Uh, Made some pretty good money. It'll be great for the kids to make some extra funds during during ball games and concessions. So, so that was a, my positive end. Uh, and a good one. Just need to have some cinnamon rolls for the ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How long will we need in uh, executive session tonight? Over five minutes. Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> you never listen to me on the time anyway. So. <laughs> Do what you want. <laughs> Bart, what's your your um, motion here? Yeah. I mean, oh, this person. I move that we go on to executive session and discuss personal matters to protect the privacy of non elected personnel with Travis Mr. Olive and Mr. Martin present. That would be an open session, or we return to open session in five minutes. Second that. Move and second to go to executive session, discuss personal matters. Protect privacy of non elected personnel with Mr. Fire Mr. Ollie and the board for five minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Session. Got two resignations to accept. I'd recommend uh, accepting the resignation of uh, Mr. Cutright as uh, a teacher at the end of this school year. Can we get a motion for that? I so move. Second. Second. Second and Carl. 
to accept the resignation of David Cartwright effective in the school year. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7 0. And we will uh, look to fill that position immediately. We'll uh, open that up and try to. I think working on that early is uh, in our best interest. So. Okay. We also have a resignation from Mr. Cooper. We get a motion to accept that resignation at the end of the school year. I'll make the motion to accept the resignation of Mr. Cooper. So, mm -hmm. We move and second him to accept the resignation of Mr. Cooper effective at the end of the school year. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 7-0. Uh, with that position, um, over the next month, I think we need to consider what we do with that position. With all our budget discussion, uh, what's going to happen there. Uh, we're working on rearranging how we fund our title program. Uh, I think it makes sense to look at moving Mrs. Russell into that second grade position and uh, potentially add an aide to help out with some of the MTSS and make up for that uh, loss in that title program uh, depending on funding and how that works out. Uh, so consider that. Um, We'll be discussing all those things with staff over the next few weeks. So uh, we'll discuss that further at the next meeting. Okay. All right, uh, future agenda items. Calendar for next year? <clears throat> Calendar, I think we'll be ready to approve that uh, at the next meeting. Uh, we'll kind of discuss our school vehicles next month and where we are with those, uh, buses and uh, passenger vehicles. If we have any updates, that may not be next month uh, uh, on the curriculum and courses if we have things to change. Um, and then uh, uh, still working on a financial auditor. Didn't include that in my report. It was in the packet. Uh, we sent out letters to financial auditors to get proposals there. So we should have those back and have one to approve. I'll have a rec recommendation for you at that time. Okay, any other business come forward to work? What about uh, what's the architects? Uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't have a timeline on that. They'll have to get it all designed, and then uh, we will have to let the bids. So when they have it designed, uh, okay. then we'll get together and let the bids, um, and then, of course, give them time to put their bids together and then come back together and accept the bids. So. I'm guessing March at the more March meeting at the earliest before we would have bids back, and I think that I don't think that's realistic. So. <clears throat> Anything else tonight? <clears throat> Move to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second to adjourn. All in favor, aye. 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 aye.